Welcome back to another NXT review with me, Mr. Park, and on behalf of the British Fist. As per usual, if you have any comments on the show or anything NXT related, seeing as there's been loads of NXT debuts and everything in the WWE, please put the comments down there in the comment section below. But tonight, I'm just going to get right onto this show. So we opened up the show with Colin Cassidy and Aiden English facing off in a match. Two characters that, for different reasons, I do actually really enjoy and I'm very entertained by. A in English, a little bit more so the artiste, of course, than Colin Cassidy, but that's mainly due to the fact that Enzo Amore isn't out there with Colin Cassidy. Fingers crossed that Enzo Amore recovers from that broken leg and gets back in the ring some kind of manager role soon. And I guess my overlying thoughts on this segment um, was really based on the feud they had a couple of months ago, which I was really enjoying. They were finding good ways of putting heat on Aiden English. They had a really entertaining sing-off. They, they even put... Enzo Amore in there in the wheelchair to get heat on Aiden English. And, you know, my overlying thoughts really was that this feud was really good. And it was really interesting. Then the match they had was just really poor. Only lasted two or three minutes and just ended the feud terribly and just really disappointed me. You know, ever since then, we've really heard nothing about these two guys feuding. And all of a sudden, they just have a match on NXT. And I know the commentators were saying about the fact that they feuded before, but we've heard really nothing between these two, no heat or anything between these two since that time. Now, I guess at least this time, they're allowed to have a bit of a longer match tell, maybe a little bit more of a story in the ring, you know, as limited as that story was. And Aiden English ended up winning with the tights. So he did end up winning clean this time. So they allowed Aiden English to get a little bit of heat on Colin Cassidy. But it does seem like... Colin Cassidy could just never, ever get the victory over Aiden English. It always seems like Aiden English has his number. So Tyler Breeze got interviewed backstage, and he just thought the show needed some gorgeousness. What a damn good character this guy is. So on this week's edition of NXT, you had Oliver Gray, my homeboy Oliver Gray, returning after a year out with a torn ACL, just to lose to Camacho in a match. I was a tad disappointed with that, but I really shouldn't have been surprised, because earlier on in the day... I saw an article on the NXT Facebook about Camacho being this new singles guy and trying to work his way to the NXT Championship and getting his revenge on Adam Rose. So it really shouldn't have surprised me that Oliver Gray the yeah, Camacho. But I just thought with Oliver Gray just coming back from his injury, they'd want to get him started strong and give him a victory over Camacho, a character which is really going nowhere in NXT. At least you could probably do something with Oliver Gray and the fact that he's British. And girls were screaming for Oliver Gray. You know why that is, WWE? It's because American girls love British guys. Damn it, maybe I should get down to America one day and I hope probably find myself a girlfriend or something. I like the way Paige was featured on this show. You know, I know she just won the WWE Divas Championship, but she still has that NXT Women's Championship. So it was nice that they decided to feature her on this show and highlight the fact that she just beat AJ Lee on the post-WrestleMania Raw to win that Divas Championship. We got a nice video package showcasing that and a little bit on Paige's character, similar to the ones we've been getting on Raw and SmackDown. And she even got quite an extensive interview for a Diva uh, with Todd Phillips as well. So... I liked how they featured Paige this week and allowed her to talk a little bit, talk a little bit about the locker room and you know her having a target on her back with now having both the Divas Championship and the NXT Women's Championship. Must admit, it was kind of weird seeing a female hold two titles. I will say that, but she still has the NXT Women's Championship. So you'd now imagine with the way did this interview that maybe Charlotte will be the next challenger, and then they'll probably have Charlotte become the next NXT Women's Champion so Paige can do her thing on the main roster right now. I believe she is the youngest person on the main roster now at 21 years old, so really, really well done, Paige. Also, speaking of the NXT Divas division, Charlotte is now leading the way for the BFS because Sasha Banks has now lost the last two matches against Emma and Bailey, so they'll be in tag action next week against Emma and a partner of her choosing. And Charlotte wants to add a little bit of flair to the proceedings, one might say. So yeah, the piss break that I knew I was going to take, and I used this opportunity to go make myself some much-needed snacks. Uh, we had C.J. Parker addressing the WWE Universe, which I really didn't give a shit about, and then he loses to the Great Carly, which I didn't really give a shit about, but. I can't deny the fact that the fans actually seem to enjoy and get some kind of kick out of this. I don't know why, but the fans were chanting global warming one more time. They were actually quite into this segment. I think it's got to the point now 
where the crowd actually hates CJ Parker as a gimmick so much. I don't think it's because he's all about the environment and everything. I just think it's because they just hate CJ Parker in general. So even a guy like Great Carly, who a lot of fans really don't like that much, even a guy like Great Carly can just waltz on down to NXT, kick his ass and get some kind of cheer. Now that's kind of strange how it happened there. Could it be? NXT building a new tag team? With similar attire? Oh my god! Jason Jordan and Ty Dillinger versus Baron Corbin and... I didn't get the guy's name. I apologize to the person who was in that match. I just didn't get your name. I'm sorry. But I'm just so fucking glad that NXT have finally taken the time to jump up a new fucking tag team. Because it's about time we fucking need it. Because the Ascension were on this show facing some jobbers. And quite frankly, I really didn't give two shits. It's like I said on Twitter, you can have the best gimmick in the world. But if you have no challenges to face off or no real opponents, then what's the point of that gimmick? It's just pointless. But at least now NXT are making a new tag team. You know, Jason Jordan and Ty Dillinger, while they're in the same attire, and they were quite decent in this match, and I've always kind of been a little bit of a fan of Jason Jordan ever since he was in FCW. He actually beat Damian Sandow in his last match on FCW. So I'm glad to see him getting some TV time that doesn't involve him jobbing out to a bigger character on the show. So this isn't like the greatest thing ever, but in a you know in an NXT tag team division that has been very stale and devoid of any new teams for quite some time, unless you count the American Wolves when they briefly came in, uh, this is good. You know now NXT, please build up more teams like this. Specific build up this one and maybe a team involving Gar uh, Baron Corbin because I was actually quite impressed by this guy and I was actually quite impressed. Another couple of times, I believe he was jobbing to people. I was actually impressed with him then. You know, he's a former American footballer. I believe he was a linebacker. So get him in some sort of heel tag team as well. And maybe you can feud these tag teams and maybe put over Jason Jordan and Ty Ginger. Hell, just put Baron Corbin on a damn singles run. You know, he was quite impressive here. I'm just so glad that NXT have finally decided to try and spotlight some new tag teams. God, this has been needed for fucking ages now. So this main event segment, or match I guess it was, between Adrian Neville and Brodus Clay just left me face palming. If Brodus Clay won this match, he got a shot at Adrian Neville's NXT Championship. This just left me face palming, simply because of the fact it just typifies the way WWE book their heels terribly and always seem to favour their baby faces in feuds and never really allow any heat to be put on the heel at all. You look at a guy like John Cena... You know, they put some decent heat on Bray Wyatt going into WrestleMania. But at the end of the day, John Cena overcomes all and wins at WrestleMania. And they're going to have another match at Extreme Rules. Well, this is kind of how I felt about this as well. So, number one, they haven't really put any heat on Brodus Clay at all. You know, he's firstly just walked into NXT, you know, beat some guy quickly, beat up another guy, you know... Has a face off of Adrian Neville and he walks out of the ring even though the guy is half his size. How the fuck is that putting any heat on a heel? I don't care, you know, this is Brodus Clay. You know, I don't care if he's down with management or whatever. He's 400 pounds. He was a legit fucking, he was a legit fucking bodyguard for the Snoop Dogg, you know, from what I've heard. And you can't put heat on this guy. You know, seriously, and why the hell is Brodus Clay still in the Funkasaurus gear? Why can't we at least package him to look like a heel? I'm all for Adrian Neville facing Brodus Clay. I really am, because it presents something different for Adrian Neville. A bigger guy, which he hasn't really faced. We haven't really seen him face too many bigger guys in NXT, so it's something different. It offers a little bit of variation. We don't have many big guys in NXT. It's something different for Adrian Neville to eventually overcome. You know, but they haven't really put that much heat on Brodus Clay here. And the way this match was fucking booked, with the match ending in a countout and giving Adrian Neville the damn win, and then he stands tall in the fucking ring, and, you know, as, as, as Brodus Clay backs down the ring like a typical WWE cowardly heel, I was just thinking, what's the point? You know, what's the point in Brodus Clay going after Adrian Neville, when the baby face always seems to come out on top, and if you're never going to actually go anywhere in putting heat on Brodus Clay, what the fuck is the point? A lot of, I know a lot of guys out there really like Adrian Neville. I like Adrian Neville. I really do. 
But, you know, if the engine ever wants to be put over more, you'd be better off putting more heat on Broder's Clay so you can put over Asia and Neville more. It just seems so silly to me that they've got Broder's Clay going after Adrian Neville and they just to put any fucking heat on the guy or allow him to actually get any heat on NXT. It just annoys me with the WWE, the way they book their heels and book their baby faces. And eventually, at the end of the day, you know, people may end up resenting Adrian Neville because he's always winning clean or he's always winning or, you know, the heel never gets any heat on him. It happened with Sheamus. There's a reason why it happened with Sheamus, because he was winning clean all the damn time, never overcome a heel, the heels never got heat on him, so the fans started resenting him and booing his ass. And that is why he hasn't been able to get a consistent reaction, you know, a good reaction like he did at one point, ever since. So like I said, this main event segment, if you liked it, whatever. But for me, I was just thinking, you know, this, with the, with the, you know, with the stipulation they had, if Brodus Clay wins, he gets the shot at the title. It would have been a good way to present Brodus Clay as a legit challenger to Adrian Neville, not hard, as he's 400 fucking legit pounds, a fucking bodyguard for the Snoop Dogg, just saying, so he is legit, and they can't even do that. It just annoys me so much. If you have any thoughts on this, Please leave them down in the comment section below. I was just face it. As for the so called edition of NXT, it was okay. That's all it was. It was okay. If this was a good main event segment, I may have thought of it as a good show. But at the end of the day, the main event segment is a segment that you generally remember. And all I'm remembering is the fact that they just can't put any fucking heat on Brodus Clay. So why even bring Brodus Clay down to Feud of Asia and Neville? I'm just saying. But anyway. Let me, let me have your thoughts, or put your thoughts on this show down in the comment section below. Hell, maybe you completely disagree with the way I felt about this main event. You know, maybe you do. But at least NXT are building a new tag team. The Divas division is still looking good. You know, Aiden English and Colin Cassidy had a somewhat decent match, even though the storyline has kind of really faltered since then. And the main event match wasn't actually that bad between Shinobu's Clay. It was something different. It's just, I just hate the whole way they booked their fucking heels. It just... I thought this was a perfect opportunity to really book Brodus Clay as a legit monster heel. And they couldn't even do that. So thank you very much for watching if you have. Thank you for putting up with my end of fucking video rant. And I'll be here same time next week to review NXT. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and goodbye.